We have nobody yeah. zooming in, including my husband. That's <laughs> All right, let's call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the um, City Council and WPCA regular meeting. Today is Monday, September 19th. I'm trying to throw me off with that PC in there, aren't you? Today is Monday, September 19th, 2022. It is 6.30 p.m. Uh, present and attending in person is City Hall Auditorium. I have Councilman Waldron, Councilwoman Hona, Councilwoman Ruet, and Councilman Oliver. And we have no participants via Zoom uh, at the moment. Okay, before we begin the meeting, could we please stand and press the pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item one on the agenda this evening, I'll entertain a motion to open the meeting to the public in accordance with section four, subsection E of the city council and WPCA meeting rules of procedure. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Oliver. Second. And second by Councilwoman Hona. Question, uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, we're open to the public. Oh, he's already leaped up, Mr. Ivain. Good evening. I was worried for a minute there. I was gonna be the only uh, heckler in the back of the room. But uh, I'm glad I'm joined by a few more people back there in, in the audience. Uh, we had World Cleanup Day on Saturday. Uh, we had um, some key participants on that that did uh, you know, heroic efforts. Uh, Tom Kandaffer from the Torrington Trails Network. I, I believe he spent all week cleaning up trails behind um, Plant Fitness, Town Fair Tire, and uh, Warrington Willow Mill. So he alone probably packed half of the dumpster. And uh, he was uh, all day on Saturday, he was down in river, and then he was also at Stillwater uh, Dam. So he did a great effort there. So I wanna thank him for doing that. Uh, Nate Nardi Cyrus of the Torrington Land Use Commission uh, organized effort. And I wanna thank him for everything he did on that. Uh, so we had other participants from the Conservation Commission and on uh, the Historic Preservation Land Trust. So I want to thank them also. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ravane. Still open to the public if there is anyone from the public wishing to address the council. Seeing no one else, we'll move into item two. I'll entertain a motion to accept the regular meeting minutes from September 6, 2022. So moved. Thank you, Councilwoman Rowett. Second. And second by Councilman Waldron. Questions on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item three, I'll entertain a motion to accept the mayor's appointment of Deborah Ian, Ian Acido as a regular member of the Board of Finance to fill the remainder of a six-year term, which will expire on December 15th, 2023. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Hona. Um, and just for uh, additional information, I think uh, Heather may have sent out to you, it is Lance Boynton who resigned um, because he sold his house and moved out of state. So this is filling his vacancy. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item four. <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion on the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Commission and the City Planner to adopt the City of Torrington Housing Affordability Plan 2022-2027 as the official affordable housing plan for the City of Torrington, as further explained in City Planner's letter dated September 6, 2022. I'm going to move it. Thank you, Councilwoman Rowett. Second. A second by Councilman Waldron. And questions? I think I have at least two more. Um, yes, I spent quite a bit of time with it, trying to make sure that I was understanding everything. And, and I get it, and I, it's a solid plan. Um, I did see one that was, you know, our census as far as children has fallen about, about yeah, about 1,000 over 2010. However, it has gone up. 
it's gone up about from 2000. So in 2020, it was 3,600. And this year it's 3,800 and change. So it's gone up a couple hundred. Like, is there any, do we have to, I guess if it's a five-year plan, we'll just reevaluate in five years. Cause I'm thinking that I'm hopeful that the age um, of our population tends to level out and we have some more young families, but I don't know if there's been any consideration for the changes that we've seen in the last couple of years. Is, um, I don't see if Jocelyn's on. I know, I'm a little, um, she was gonna zoom in. So um, just to paraphrase phrase the question, while the um, number of school-aged children dropped from 2010 to 2020, we know that through the pandemic, it also jumped a little bit. Yeah. So I think the net is closer to an 800. Yeah, and we're using, of course, we're using the latest census, census numbers. Data. So things that was right in the middle of the beginning of COVID. Um, we can, we're, we're required to do it every five years, but we can, just like we do with our plan of conservation and development, we can open it and, and modify it. And that kicks that five-year date out. So, um, you know, we can open it up again at any point to, uh, to flesh it out. If, if we notice some, some big issues like that. Thank you. Um, and we do get the, um, the um, American Community Survey data each year. Those are estimates, but um, you know, we do get that each year. Uh, we, um, I don't think we, well, we won't see a new one until the spring or late winter more than likely, but we'll see if there's any changes with that. And if we need to reevaluate, we can do that. Um, is there any conversation? I understand that this is an affordability plan and it kind of gives us um, guidelines to follow, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, but where does it come into play when we are, you know, sort of in, maybe this affordable housing will just take our existing residents and give them more affordable housing options, mm -hmm. which would be great. Um, it may also entice more people to move in, which is also great. However, I'm concerned about on the back end any additional costs that we incur, you know, safety, traffic, um, education costs. So I didn't see anything in this plan, and I, I haven't done a lot of research into other cities about what they've done to just sort of address what those other costs are, because my fear is that if it ends up costing the city residents, the city taxpayers more money for these services, then it's going to end up costing more in taxes for the other residents that sort of changes the affordability for others. So how do, you, how do we account for that? Does that come into the plan at all? Yeah, I mean, uh, one, I know a big portion of the plan is, is, um, is rehabbing existing structures too. It's not just for new, you know, new construction for affordability. And, and you know, we're, we'll have to review, the, re review those case by case. Um, but one of the big focuses was not just our, you know, existing larger buildings, but rehabbing two and three families. Um, you know, our, our housing stock is in, is in rough shape in, in quite a few areas of, of the city. So um, that, that is a big part of it too, is, is, is making the existing buildings and structures and houses um, usable as well. So, I mean, you know, while new, new construction projects may come along, that's not the sole focus of the plan. Um, so, I mean, I think regardless of what the plan says, those those cases would come before planning and zoning and you know we review those for for what they are on a plan but also how they how they meet our plan of conservation and development and our and now our housing plan um so i you know that to, to that extent we we would just have to see what what the response is to to this plan and again adjust as we go yeah, I think that's just my, my thoughts and concerns that we just continue to have those mm -hmm. conversations about how it affects the city at large. I was yeah. excited about the accessory apartment concept. I hadn't really yes. dived into it. And that's a great mm -hmm. use of our space too and would help a yeah. lot of our aging population. Well, another thing we, we expect to bring forward to, to planning and zoning, I think fairly soon in, in response to this plan is um, some, some adjustments to density restrictions in, in downtown, in downtown only, because at least for now, um, in, in response to what we've seen out of this plan, because, you know, as we know, we need foot traffic and, and mixed use development. Um, and, you know, again, rehabbing of buildings in downtown, so. Well, I would certainly like to be able to have more people be able to afford to live here and have extra mm -hmm. money to spend on services and restaurants, yeah. so. Thank you, mm -hmm. I appreciate it. And I think the only thing that I would add um, to that answer is, uh, this is just a, an assessment of where we are and where opportunities exist mm -hmm. for rehabbing ex existing 
you know, and uh, what, where the gaps are, you know, what are those gaps? This affordability um, housing plan um, came right at the same time as Hartford HealthCare's um, uh, CHINA. It's their community health needs yep. assessment, which also identified a significant need in housing. Um, as we go forward to your to Councilwoman Hona's um, points, um, with each opportunity for an increase in housing or increase in uh, seeking funds for rehabilitation efforts, um, on a case by case basis, we would look at those things. You know, if we're talking about another sixty units uh, of some housing, look at that. Is it uh, is it fifty five and older? In which case, everything is going to be looked at through a very different lens very little impact on the Board of Education. However, you know, as those uh, 55 and older people move out of the uh, existing 1,500, 1,800, 2,000 square foot homes, and then those houses get backfilled with young families, which is always the goal, um, you know, you have to look at that. Every single uh, incident or uh, opportunity uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. So um, we also know that, uh, with the most recent uh, discussion regarding uh, additional apartments and the concern that this was gonna result in another uh, 100 or 150 students, the Board of Education went back and redid their um, enrollment projections based on those number of units. And it actually ended up being less than 20 students that would be impacted. So having all of those resources that actually give you those solid answers versus you know we're we're guessing based on how many bedrooms what we'll, what we can anticipate but and it, and in the end what we see out of the what we see what we get out of the plan is is a need to make adjustments to maybe what we have in our in our regulations um, you know not not only based on on what we're seeing in the population projections but also the feedback from the residents because a big portion of, of putting this putting this plan together was a was a, was a survey to residents. And, you know, we, we could have used more responses, but we did get over 500 responses to our, to our survey, which was really, really helpful for, for the guidance on the plan, so. Other questions? Just, just one, <clears throat> one thing, if you don't mind. Uh, as I was going through the, uh, the plan, uh, one thing, well, many things uh, jumped out at me, but I just saw the discussion about goal 1B, which was uh, two and three family homes in Torrington. I didn't realize that almost 30% of our homes in Torrington are two, three, four family. Mm -hmm. What was interesting about that one area specifically that caught me was uh, the uninhabited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, do we have any sense as to how many vacant multiple family homes are, are available or not available or are in the marketplace right now in Torrington? And I'm not, I'm, it used I'm to actually, be hard to get, <laughs> you know, rents were different years ago than they are now. So, and, and I'm actually not sure where jo Jocelyn got those numbers from, from a source. And I don't, I don't, I couldn't tell you what the source was. I don't know if she's, yeah, she's not here to, okay. but there was a source that she got for that. And I, I don't believe those are completely vacant buildings. Those are buildings that have at least that have vacancies. one a, a unit or uh, they have, that have vacancies. And now when we're talking about a three family house, it might be one vacant unit. Yeah. Um, so they're not totally vacant, two, three, four. Right, right. There are some of those out there, but yeah. it's, that's not 30% of our housing stock. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. And actually, Torrington, um, Torrington Health District tracks a lot of those. Um, okay. Great. I think the last question, more comment, but to your point, I did watch that doing well while doing good video over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And it really would be great, I think, there's a lot of landlords or, you know, yeah. people that live in town with an empty apartment that might really feel much better about making mm -hmm. their apartment, you know, working to redo their apartment and making it, you know, suitable for a family or a new mm -hmm. renter. Yeah, especially if there's rehab yes. money available. Right. Because available. many people don't know that. So I think getting the word out will help. Yeah, I thought that would be good. I was convinced of that. Yeah, we're, well, we're hoping to do some, some more proactive outreach um, this winter. Okay. With, for, to landlords, so. Good. Yep. Some of those strategies include tapping into the resources that already exist uh, through our ARPA funding. You will recall that we've made a proposal to set aside $200,000 for lead paint abatement. We've already had a number of meetings with uh, Torrington Health District to design what that would look like. We also brought in the um, 
the uh, uh, Connecticut Children's Hospital that has a Healthy Homes Initiative to see that how we can leverage that two hundred thousand dollars to uh, increase uh, additional funding for not only lead paint abatement, asbestos, and mold. So um, a lot of work that this plan has already planted the seeds for us that we can now try to put together some uh, scaffolded um, grant and uh, low income opportunities to put those vacant units on track. I will tell you, I know one property owner who has lead paint uh, in his um, apartment and for that reason will not rent it out to a family. Mm. It's just too risky. The liability is great. But if there's an opportunity for us to provide and you know, uh, not income eligible for a lot of the small cities programs, because those are designed for low income families. Um, but if there's an opportunity for these grants um, uh, and a way to get that you know, great five room apartment with yeah. a great yard and yeah. you know, walking distance to downtown mm -hmm. back online and rent it to a family, it's a big win. Yeah. So this, this plan, even in its draft state, has already given us a lot of information as to how we can start putting together some, uh, some strategies. Yes, yep, we're already putting it to work, so. Other questions or comments? No, nope, just thank you again to the committee. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize you were going to be continuing with the same committee. I'm glad I'm not on that committee. <laughs> time commitment that you've already made. Yeah, um, yeah, we, they've done some very good work. Yep. Uh, Sharon's so, not here tonight, but I know Sharon Wagner is a participant on it yep. uh, as a volunteer. So it, commitment. It started with Marty and Jocelyn too, preceding our our shuffling around in the in the land use office. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Call the motion. All right. Uh, motion's been called. Uh, I'll. Um, Call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. For the record, Armand Menichia is um, on the call via Zoom. Moving into, thank you, Jeremy. Um, moving into item five. I'll enter a motion to utilize state contract number 12, PSX 0194, to purchase two utility and one half cage police interceptors. For $48,780.65 per unit plus $7,230 per unit radio upfit, the total cost for these uh, vehicles is $112,021.30 uh, to be purchased from MHQ Municipal Vehicles of Marble Mass to be paid from our vehicle replacement account as further explained in purchasing agent's letter dated September 1, 2022. This has already been approved by the Board of Public Safety. Do I have a motion? Right. Thank you, Councilwoman Rowett. Second. And seconded by Councilwoman Hona. Uh, questions on the motion? Carrying on. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item six, I'll enter a motion by the City Council acting herein as the Water Pollution Control Authority to accept the recommendation of the WPCA Administrator and Fleet Manager to pre-approve the purchase of a used roll-off truck, not to exceed the sum of $70,000. As further explained in the WPCA Administrator's memo dated September 13th, 2022. I'll move it. Thank you, Councilman. Second. Second by Councilman Oliver. The meal isn't here, but was this one went through the vehicle replacement committee? No. 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 Oh, sorry. So Ed Towsey from WPCA is here to talk about this roll-off. Okay, so we have a need to move our sludge containers, you know, pull them out of the bay so we can keep the equipment running. Um, we don't have a piece of equipment that can do that. It's more looking for a yard truck, not an over the road truck. So we're looking for something used for cost savings. Um, so we can't go out to bid really for a used vehicle. So That's it's not we're... identified in the vehicle replacement. It's it's not plan. WPCA is not part of that. Okay. Okay. I don't, I have a fairly good memory and I didn't remember this, so <laughs> thank you for the clarification. Okay. Other questions for Ed. So where would, would the money you already have the money in your budget for yes. it or is it? Yes. But come out of our capital. Yeah, this is the WPCA budget. Mm -hmm. Which sometimes is always confusing. It's a little separate. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I wanted to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
wondering the same question. Yeah. Since I'm on that committee, I don't remember this one. So we just met it. last month. So yep. all right. If there are no additional questions, I will call this motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item seven. I'll entertain a motion to accept the recommendation of the vehicle replacement advisory board and the fleet manager to authorize a purchase of a 2022 Ford Ranger 4x4 from Stoneham Ford of Stoneham Mass for $36,899 to be funded from vehicle replacement as further explained in fleet manager's memo dated September 13th, 2022. Now move it. Thank you, Councilman Roet. Second. Second by Councilman Manigia. Are there questions on this motion? Who's, what department is this for? This is for the, uh, I'm a this is Public Works uh, oh. Street Park. Oh, okay. Other questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item eight, I'll entertain a motion to authorize the mayor to act on behalf of the city to award, execute, and administer a contract for snow plowing services for the senior center facility to Roberts Property Management of Thomaston, Connecticut for an estimated sum of $9,150 as further explained in purchasing agent's letter dated September 13th, 2022. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Manichia. Second. And seconded by Councilman Waldron. Are there questions on this motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item nine, on recommendation of Lieutenant Thomas Rouleau, Training Officer Nicole Santiago, Chief William Baldwin and Penny Zuko, Purchasing Agent, uh, that this contract that the contract for uniforms be awarded to Fairfield Uniform Company of Bridgeport at the annualized estimated cost. Funding for the purchase is to be done is budgeted in the police department budget under uniform allowance line item. It is $42,000. This was previously approved by the Board of Safety on September 13th, 2022. So moved. Thank you. Second. Sister. And second by Councilman Manichia. Are there questions on this motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10, I'll entertain a motion by the City Council acting here in the Water Pollution Control Authority to approve the following payments from Fund 490 Sanitary Sewer Capital Improvement, uh, Wright Pierce in the sum of $6,191.18 and uh, for invoice 222754 and to Wright Pierce in the sum of $4,600.63 for invoice 222565. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Mulder. Second. And second by Councilman Oliver. Questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11, I'll entertain a motion to accept the recommendations of the tax collector and authorize the tax refunds indicated on the uh, List dated September 19th, 2022. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. And second by Councilman Manichia. Are there questions on this motion? No. Hearing none. I'll call the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 12. I'll introduce a motion to accept the recommendation of the tax collector and authorize the sewer usage refunds indicating list dated September 19th, 2022. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Hona. Questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 13, I'll entertain a motion to consider business by department heads. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Hona. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Ed, anything to add on the WC PCA tonight? Oh, Jeremy, anything else? No. Uh, did you just want to mention sustainable CT oh, and the application? Yeah. Since you're here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, with the uh, approval of the housing plan, it's it kind of buttons up the last item that um, the sustainable CT program was looking for in order to award us our 
our bronze uh, certification through sustainable CT. So we should be hearing back from them sometime in October to confirm that. Um, and there will be, there's, you know, if everything works out, there will be a, a presentation of our, of our bronze plaque at, um, I think it was November 14th? Yes. At a November 14th event at the West Hartford um, Town Hall um, for that award. So as far as I know, that, would, that buttoned everything up for us. So we should be, we should be getting our bronze certification. Does it give you more money? Or uh, well, so mm -hmm. it's it's a statewide it's a statewide program um, that uh, I and I can send in, in the information out through through the mayor. Um, it, it's a series of of different categories that that we have to meet certain requirements in. So some of it's housing, some of it's say conservation, and some of it's homelessness. It's it's it runs the gamut of um, of action items that, that we need to perform. A lot of them we had already covered and it was just a matter of gathering information. And there were some, you know, items we had to do like adopt an affordable housing plan. Um, it does give us an extra look when the state is awarding grants. Um, they, they, pref they give preferential treatment to, to towns and cities that have sustainable CT certification. Um, so I, I know that we've been working on it for quite some time, but we really, we really buckled down on it in the last probably four to six months to get it, to make sure to get it done. Um, so we, uh, I think I'm just guessing here, but we are, we would be about the 60th, 50th, 60th community to get, to get bronze. And there's a few that are up to silver, which we'll work on for, for next year. So. Congratulations. Thank you. The, um, when the council agreed that we wanted to pursue um, certification through the sustainable CT, I think it was Councilman Kevin Earl at the time said, is this some sort of accreditation? Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the most succinct way to describe yeah. what this is. It's, it's more close to or akin to being accredited in yeah. areas such as housing, education, uh, environmental um, uh, issues, yeah. uh, both brownfield and greenfields. Um, so it's it's really a really very comprehensive certification, um, but it's been fun. There's a there's a, a short like one or two page summary sheet that I, the uh, summary page that we can just- We can send it out and remind yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, there may be some new members that, that never yeah. saw it when we voted on it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and, and, and I, I just know that when, uh, you know, the state talks about things like awarding grants and and various things like that. Now they they one of the things they ask is are they sustainable CT certified? So we'll add us to the list. Thank you. Fingers crossed for November fourteenth. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I saw Dan Farley in the room. Oh, he is. You're you're hiding back there. Do you have anything to say? Okay. Um, city clerk's office. Uh, the uh, deputy Republican registrar voter resigned last week, and so this morning Ed Wilmot appointed Janice Lanza Okay, thank you. Um, moving into item 14, I'll let you take a motion to consider business by the mayor and members. Thank you, Councilwoman Hona. Second. And second by Councilwoman Rowett. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. We'll go to the screen first. Anything this evening, uh, Councilman Manichia? No, thank you. Councilman Waldron? Uh, nothing from me, Mayor. Thanks. Councilwoman Hona? Uh, just two things. Um, one, I'm excited for the Main Street Torrington Oktoberfest this Saturday. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I'm bringing my mother in law to represent the German side of my husband's family, she's going to represent me, but um, there are still tickets available at firstbeerfree.com. Uh, I look like it's going to be a really fun event. I didn't get to go last year, so it um, looks like it will be um, a nice a nice event for our town. Um, and I just want to comment as a, as a mom that drives my kids to school, I spoil them a little bit. It's my one-on-one -on -one time with each of them, and I drive to an elementary school and the middle school and the high school and probably contribute to the traffic problems, but I want to say that in all of those places and with so many of our changes in administration and traffic patterns and things like that, there's been um, 
really, it's going really smoothly. The transition to school has been going really well. And I, I, I love that when I drive in, particularly to the high school every morning, um, that we're seeing, you get to see work happening each day and occasionally catch glimpses of people I went to high school with working machines in the front. So that's also nice to see our Torrington people working on the job and just kind of a good sign of progress for the city. It's been, it's been nice. And the drop off takes less than 10 minutes. So I was afraid you were going to go somewhere else with no, that, especially with with the uh, road construction that's been going on. I really expected to hear some uh, negative feedback, but yeah. I agree with you. My experience driving by two elementary schools on my way in that the traffic hasn't been really, really off. It could be that more parents listen to the instruction to put their kids on the bus than me. I might be, but whatever the case is, it's actually been working. They just you can tell they're putting the staff in to try to get people through. And it's working well. Great. OK, thank you. Councilwoman Rowett. I have nothing tonight, Mayor. Councilman Oliver. Nothing tonight, thank you. All right, uh, I will just um, remind the council that um, uh, Nate from our land use office did file the Safe Streets for All grant application, which was due on September 15th. Um, in addition to planning the Clean Up the World Day, uh, he's been uh, very busy. So um, that's the good news. We'll keep our fingers crossed on that grant and economic development office is finalizing two grant applications. Uh, the community challenge grant application, which is for the railroad square. We're going back after that with a little more meat on the bones this time. Uh, and through our COD, we have our transportation alternatives grant that uh, has been um, reaffirmed. Um, so hopefully in the next few weeks, you'll start to hear some report back on any on all of those grants. The Brownfield grant also uh, for the um, Water Street property was submitted. So our offices and staff have been extremely busy. Uh, East Main Street sidewalk project uh, bids were returned. Um, and I expect at the next meeting, our engineer will probably want to I'm saying the next meeting, I believe he has to run them by DOT first, and then he'll bring them back to the council for council approval. Um, we're losing uh, the good weather, um, but we're still hopeful that maybe there might be a shovel on the ground before winter. Uh, and that's about it from my office. I'll move into item 15 and entertain a motion to open the meeting back to the public for comment on agenda items only. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Allen. Second. Seconded by Councilman Minichia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We're back to the public on agenda items. <laughs> <laughs> You're excused. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there being no further business before the board, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Oliver. I heard Councilwoman uh, Hoda. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> We're adjourned. Maybe I'm a good luck chart for yeah. quick meetings. I don't know. Good night. So, Carol, what are we saying? See you, Armand. Good night. What's the